You may think you know all of the flying fins, especially the one in car number seven. The race-winning driver who is blisteringly quick? Well, this is a totally different kind of Kimi. Today, we're in the grandstand with Emma Kimmelainen. We are in the grandstand with Emma Kimmelainen. And, well, Emma, thank you for joining. You've been racing since 2005, I think, in terms of single-seater racing. Were you karting before that? Yeah, I was. I started karting when I was three years old. So it's been a wow. long time. <laughs> I did my first race when I was five. So, um, yeah, pretty pretty many years already. <laughs> so was that competitive well, racing? Yeah, yeah, well, I, I yeah, it was. Uh, I started, like... Yeah, at the age of five, I got a bigger card and then um, and then I could participate in races. And then um, in Finland, at the age of 10, you can do national uh, national competitions as well. So then it was like a Finnish championship and I was uh, racing together with many, many good drivers, such as Valtteri Bottas, for example. <laughs> oh, wow, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah, we're at the same age, so... We know each other uh, well. Was it like a personal interest that got you into racing? Or was it your parents encouraging you into it? Um, no, personal interest. Of course, there is always someone who introduces the sport because obviously at the age of one, I didn't know <laughs> anything about <laughs> motorsport. So obviously it's my uh, it's my dad to blame. Uh, yeah. He oh, has always been a motorsport enthusiastic and uh, wanted to... Uh, to buy a go-kart for himself just for fun and then at the same time uh, then my brother uh, and and i we got a a smaller go-kart together with my cousins so that's how we started so my brother is two years older than me and then we have like an evening star my little sister who is uh, eight years younger than me but she never actually started driving even though she was enjoying the time at the paddocks because uh, it was a whole family sport yeah. Um, so we were all involved, uh, and, uh, yeah, spent our summers at the tracks and, and, uh, traveling all around Finland with a caravan and all that. So. That's so, so fun. So with all that, that then led into the single seater racing stuff. How did, how did that come about from going, progressing to go-karts up to the single seaters? Yeah, well, it was, it was more of a, uh, it was about budget as well. I, I got a little bit annoyed uh, with karting because um, it was, you know, the chassis and, and all the equipment that you have. Um, it's all about how much budget you have. So uh, mm -hmm. we also wanted to move on a little bit uh, to single seaters where the, where the cars are exactly the same and there is not many manufacturers involved. So uh, yeah, I was 15 when uh, when I moved on from karting to, uh, to, to single seaters. And I did the last year of karting 2004 um, in, in Italian Open and different European championships and also the Finnish one. So, but no. as a, in a private team though. And so you went from the single seaters, you had a, a bit of a hiatus. Um, from the 2008 crash, as far as I can understand, with it sounds like the budget reasons, sponsorship, all the usual stuff with motorsport, and then you returned back into into tin tops in the Swedish touring cars. How did how did that all come about? How come you wanted to return? <laughs> yeah, it was 2010 when I uh, I had the hiatus. Like from there, um, there had been you know obviously the financial crisis at that time was a big thing. So it was really, really tough to get any any uh, funding. Um, and then I had like plenty of uh, discussions going on, but all of them just, you know, <laughs> they just didn't happen. And uh, and then, yeah, then I just, you know, decided that, okay, when all of the things that, that were ongoing was not happening, and, and then I decided that, okay, maybe I'll, I'll uh, concentrate on other things for a while and, and keep all the doors open if something comes later on. And then it took three years after that until I got that golden phone call no one ever gets saying that they've been having an eye on me for a really long time. And now they have uh, established the team and the team is ready to take me on board uh, as a professional. And uh, yeah, it was a dream come true in, in a way in a Scandinavian Touring Car Championship. It was 
So you weren't you weren't looking for it then, they just came to you after yeah. I guess watching you in these single seaters. Yeah, yeah, sure. So they, they had been watching uh, my racing since 2005 when I started the single seaters. And, uh, and yeah, and then I was a little bit like surprised. I was like, hmm, are they maybe aware that I have a six months old daughter, <laughs> <laughs> baby here? <laughs> uh, but then they, um, they were really encouraging. So they said that no matter um, if you are a mother or a, or a father, or if you are, you know, what color you are, or if you're a female or male, it doesn't matter if you have talent, you always have the talent and, and they believe in me, so. Wow, that's so progressive and nice to see happening. Which which do you yeah, prefer sure. to drive in then? The single seaters or the touring car, the covered sort of roof cars, which one's your favorite? Oh uh, yeah, well, single seaters are my, my kind of thing. Uh, or I don't know, I, I enjoy like all of, no matter what I get to drive, I always enjoy it. But uh, but I found like single seaters, and um, if there is a lot of grip and all that, so that's kind of I, I like it. And that kind of LMP type of cars are also really nice. Uh, suits me really well. Yeah. So with with all that, then it turns back to single seaters like you like and W series. How how did you first hear about that? Was that something you wanted to apply for, or did you get approached um, in a similar way? Yeah, I got approached. They had uh, hired a couple of that kind of a um, uh, headhunters, <laughs> mm. and they contacted me. Um, I needed a little bit like explaining and and pursuing maybe uh, because it was really weird that um, as a you know to to have just um, a series for females only. Uh, I didn't quite in the beginning understand the reason why it's so important. Uh, cause I was thinking, okay, you know, I just want to be the best driver, not just the best female driver. And, um, and yeah, well, but as they explained, what is it all about and why they're doing this and it's an opportunity and it's like to lift us as drivers, um, and give us, yeah, the opportunity, not, not funding, nothing. You, you don't have to have anything like that. So, uh, then I was really pleased but of course I needed to even though they contacted me I needed to uh, to apply for it uh, as everyone did and then we were selected a uh, hundred of us no it was like over 60 of us were selected to um, to a uh, the first selection process uh, which was held in Switzerland um, was it in Switzerland no it was in Austria <laughs> yeah too long ago <laughs> It was in Austria. And then uh, 30 of us from there went to another selection process, which was held in Almeria, Spain. And then there we drove uh, the uh, Formula 3 cars for the first time. And then uh, 10 of us were selected just before uh, the other uh, eight still were elected. So, yeah. so yeah, that was, that was pretty nice. So we were elected just because of our talent, nothing more. Uh, they uh, checked the... Uh, physical um, abilities, mental abilities, uh, your like uh, teamwork abilities, the racing for sure, the driving itself, uh, understanding of car, uh, your presentation skills, all that. So it was really intense week uh, at Austria and then there was another intensive week in Almeria, but it, I yeah. really enjoyed it. Yeah. It's quite fascinating that whole selection process because they weren't, as you say, they're not just interested in you being a driver, they are interested in the complete package of a person as well, which is it's quite fascinating and just sort of shows you what the modern era of racing is like where, you know, they're, they're interested in, in someone who is very marketable and knowledgeable and can express themselves and talk, you know, openly and stuff. It's quite, it's quite Yeah, exactly. And the teamwork is really, really important so that they wanted to kind of like get in inside our heads uh, in that matter to uh, to figure out like what kind of team players are we and do we understand the uh, what do we understand of the setup? Uh, how do we communicate? All these things were tested and uh, and we did a bunch of different questionnaires and, <laughs> and then they, <laughs> they kind of like profiled us. And it was really good for, for us drivers as well. And we needed to think for our, um, what kind of a career we have, what kind of future 
uh, plans, uh, goals, dreams, all that. So it was really good for us drivers as well. But of course, the selection process was uh, really professionally made uh, with all of the things. So uh, and it really for the first time, I felt myself like an athlete for, you know, taken, you know, as, as considered as a proper athlete. And, and for the first time, these things were really uh, taken care of by the organization that I'm, I was about to work with. <laughs> it sounds, uh, it sounds terrific as well, like with the everything that I have to worry about sponsorship, which I'm guessing is partly what you're alluding to with the athlete work. You don't have to be a salesman to try and get somebody yeah. to to sponsor you into the season. So we think the W Series is fantastic, and of course, you joined in 2019. Um, and then you just yeah. had such a terrific season, but marred, of course, by the first half. So first lap at Hockenheim, taken out, and then that aggravated a, an injury you had, two races out, and then you returned, yeah. three fastest laps. And from my rough calculations, you'd have, you'd have won the championship if it was from round four yep. onwards. So <laughs> do you think you could have won it? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I was, um, yeah, that was my aim all the time, and I knew because of the testing and all of those selection processes and what we had. So I knew definitely that I have uh, what it takes to win the championship, but that's the case. You just need to, um, you know, you, you need to succeed every time uh, and you can't have any crashes or anything like that when it's only six races. And uh, this year as well, when we had have eight races, so, mm, there is actually no room for any kind of failure in there uh, as well. So um, you just need to be really consistent, re really clever. Uh, and uh, and that's my my goal actually this year as well. But it was it was good to come back after the injury um, in 2019 and to really showcase uh, the true talent that I have and, and what it could have been. So uh, I enjoyed that uh, the rest of the the season really much what it could have been would have been the Assen race and you were just utterly you were dominant there you won you won the race and then you dedicated it to your doctors uh which i thought was terrific i don't know what your family mm. thought about that for your first <laughs> in the series but your uh is that something you've worked with the doctors since then just to maintain any uh, or get rid of any possibilities of having an injury again with your neck uh yeah well it was it was just you know a bad angle the, the crash when I when I was taken out uh, at Hockenheim. So the thing was that I couldn't see anyone coming because uh, actually uh, the driver came completely out of my my sight. So I looked in the mirror. I I saw that okay, there's no one there. And then I don't know had some error there or you know it was pretty wet in the inside of the corner and just completely you know missed the braking. So I had already turned in and I was completely turned in when uh, when the driver just hit me uh, really hard. So um, actually the speed was she had still like 110 kilometers per hour when when the actual impact came. So it was just a really unfortunate angle for to for the for the neck to be like this. And the hands, of course, doesn't. Um, yeah it's it's it only works this way <laughs> but not not on the on the on the vertical way so um yeah but it got fixed and uh we were trying to find the the solution for it for a while but then we we finally found where where actually the wrong is and then we could fix it and uh, uh and treat it right and then i could come back and i was yeah it was a huge moment yes no, that, well, that's so good, though, to know that, you know, when you're not going to have to worry about that issue reoccurring again. But going back to the Aston, no. I mean, you were so dominant around there. Is, is it just, <laughs> was it just like an affinity to the track? Is that a track you just really liked and got on with? Have you been there before? Uh, yeah, I had been there before. Uh, it was actually 2000, 2008 uh, when I drove Formula Masters ADAC. Uh, and Kevin Magnussen was actually my my uh, teammate there. So there I uh, I did really well. 
actually became second in the race. Led the whole race though, but uh, the, but then there was one guy who changed the tires between because he had crashed and then <laughs> he passed all of us in the last lap. And for oh. me, in the last tra- straight. So uh, then I had to, uh, yeah, be happy with the second place. Uh, but it was, yeah, I, I've always liked the track. But then in a way I had that, you know, feeling in me that damn, now I got it. Like, this is going to be my race. I'm going to do good. And then, um, and that those t- type of tracks that are fast, uh, fast corners, chicanes, uh, all that. So that kind of like, I don't know if it's okay to say, but they, they uh, require some balls, <laughs> so oh, yeah. to say. <laughs> so that, that's like my type of track. <laughs> Looking at the the back end of the season then, um, on 2019, you and Alice Powell were both um, really, really quick at thinking about well, in the Aston race and then the, the reverse grid one as well. And then Brands Hatch, you two were going at it for the win. So it kind of felt like the pair of you were taken out of the championship contention. You know, did, did you see it as it would have been uh, Alice and yourself along with Bitesker and, and Jamie for the championship and sort of like four drivers? And did you think there were anyone else that was a, a major competition in there? Yeah, well, I did. I think that uh, Marta did a good job uh, in many places and then Bitesker Visser as well uh, was really consistent and obviously Jamie is really, uh, really talented as well as Alice. And now uh, this year we're going to have uh, plenty of uh, new drivers as well. And I don't know how they are, uh, where they are leveled at. Uh, so it's going to be a really, really good racing, I think. And after that first year when everybody is more familiar with the cars and and uh, obviously, t- Jamie maybe had a little bit of advantage uh, 2019 in the beginning of the season because she had done uh, plenty of uh, Formula 3 races before. And then she had already uh, competed uh, in the ASEAN um, F- F3 just before our season started. So right. uh, she was actually the only one who had a, had a proper experience of the car. Uh, and myself for example i drove the car for the first time in in march in the almeria test and then the second time we had a, a official test uh in uh, yeah it was in uh, lost its ring so there was a I, I could feel that in the when it came um when the season forward i could feel like more comfortable in the car as well even though I'm a really quick learner, but then it still became like a tool that I really knew how to use. So yeah. uh, that came me like an extra hit as well. And now I know we have the same cars. Uh, so I know that, you know, my level is is uh, quite high from the beginning already. So that I don't need to, uh, yeah, give any kind of... Uh, what is it like? I don't need to level level down in that matter anymore. Yeah. You were a new driver to me. Uh, in when when we came to watching that season, that you were a new driver to me. But then I'd seen a lot of forum people saying Emma Kimmelina is blooming quick. And then you know, <laughs> watching the season, it was like, yeah, they're not wrong. You are very very. Oh, thanks. You made a lot of new fans that year, which was awesome. So I think there's going to be a lot of people cheering you on this season. Yeah. Well. Where I've been, because I've been unfortunately only had the opportunity to drive mostly in in Scandinavia, and only like one one uh, season in uh, in Europe. So I'm not maybe so known to to many of of people. But uh, but no matter where I've driven, it's always you know <laughs> they probably know what I'm capable of. of and now I'm really um, humbled and and so. Uh, proud that we are actually doing the races with Formula One, so that I can I can really showcase <laughs> what I'm made of uh, in that kind of an environment where I've never had the chance to be, and now because of W Series uh, I can be there and and really show that hey, here I am. <laughs> Please, <laughs> someone <laughs> maybe in the future <laughs> watch me. I think you're. Uh... I think you're going to have a lot of fans this year. Like you mentioned, the Formula One stuff, you're going to be in, in the paddock. You're going to be driving on the same the same tracks. And just speaking of the paddock, the, the 
the drivers in W Series, they just seem to be a lot more united than I've seen in any other racing series. Though when you had that crash you mentioned with Megan, uh, Megan Gilks in the first race, instead of being yeah. angry, like you hear on everyone else's team radio after a crash, you were, oh my God, is Megan okay? And is that just something that all of you are just so supportive of each other because of W Series? Why is that? Uh, yeah, I, we have huge respect for each other as drivers. Um, so we are French with each other. Of, obviously, when we put the helmets on, everyone, wanna, uh, everyone wants to win and we are competitors. But then when we take the helmets off, you know, people are cheering for each other. They are like, damn, you did a good job. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, you know, there is drivers who comes to me like, oh, I watch your, you know, onboard videos and I watch your data. I just don't get it how you do it. Like, how do you do it? And and I, I just can't follow you or, you know, like they come come for asking for uh, for help. And then, you know, everybody's cheering, doing high five uh, and, and, you know, with each other. So it's really encouraging. And uh, I think it's because we we all have uh, kind of like traveled the same path. Everybody has worked a lot to get there where they are right now. And, uh, and we've been selected through the selection process. So everybody's there for the talent, not, not anything else. So that's why, you know, it doesn't eat the, the respect that we have for each other uh, mm -hmm. at all. So um, it's really unique. And then the fact that we are all kind of like in the same team and we need to be with each other all the time as well. So uh, um, that makes it really unique. And I've um, definitely um, enjoyed it a lot. And I've seen it in a way that when I get back from the races, I'm actually recovered a lot faster mentally. So when I'm already at home, you know, I can just concentrate on being at home and not thinking about the the race weekend and all all those uh, things that has happened there and, and stuff. So I, I'm really enjoying it a lot. Yeah, well, we are enjoying watching it as well. And, you know, in particular, we mentioned the yeah. Aston. I don't want to focus on it too much. You've, uh, I'm sure you'd like to think about Aston nonstop. But that reverse grid race was terrific. That was the most entertainment we saw all season. And from your cockpit, it must have been a bit of fun as well. I think it was 15th up to 4th. So would that be something you'd like to see again as a, as a, a points scoring race this time? Yeah, well, I would, I would like to do it. To be honest, it will be quite quite fun. And um, for me, in that race, I I had a little failure in the in the front wing. It was not uh, completely attached, so I lost a lot of arrow, and uh, and and that's why, I, uh, yeah, it was a little bit cut at that team. I couldn't do I couldn't do as as fast laps that I, I did in the in the race before. But uh, but yeah, it was really entertaining, and I was actually kind of like positively surprised that. We have such a much like such uh, a lot of respect for each other that even though there were like five cars, four cars, uh, you know, uh, lined up for for um, uh, a chicane, and then even though you know everybody got out without a damage, so um, it's really entertaining, I would say. And um, yeah, more races like that, I'm, I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're going to have 2021 coming up thick and fast, of course. You've got the Formula One partnership, and you're just mentioning that you've raced primarily um, in Finland, but you're going to be going not just in Europe, but going to the States and to Mexico this season as well. So what yeah. what track are you most excited for for 2021? Yeah, well, I don't know. Uh, I'm a weird driver in a way that I don't have a, any kind of... Uh, like favorite tracks or anything like that. I, I learned really, really quickly. So um, the less we drive, the better I am <laughs> in a way. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to barely any race and all of the races because you just, I know that I if I want to and I definitely want to win the championship, I need to be really consistent and, and no errors or no failure um, are allowed in that way. So, so um really looking forward to it a whole a whole season it's going to be you know quite tight uh from starting from june and and then like five weekends in a row or something like that and then finally getting to the states and to mexico in the end and uh it's going to be amazing yeah is that somewhere you've been to mexico and and to the states before if you not not just racing as a tourist uh, are you going to get a chance to be a tourist when you're out there <laughs> yeah, actually, I've been a tourist in uh, in both of the both of the places. I've been in Florida, 
uh, as a tourist um, many, many, many years ago, like what, 13, 14 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then I've been uh, in Mexico as well as a tourist uh, in uh, in I don't even remember where it was, but it was a nice holiday anyway. I got engaged there. <laughs> Fantastic! Uh, That's great. Yeah, great ten memories. years ago. <laughs> yeah. Twenty twenty, where obviously the W Series was on on iRacing on esports, and it was pretty entertaining to watch as a as a viewer. So it must, must have been really frustrating for you as a driver to not be on a real track. Have you continued with the iRacing since then? Um, not really, <laughs> to no. be honest. I, I do I do have the... Um, I still do have the simulator, but I haven't used it since. <laughs> um, I'm going to use it, though, uh, to, to just, you know, learn the tracks that I don't know. I think it's really good. To, to, to you know kind of like uh even though it's not the same and and after the simulator you you kind of like have to learn once once more the breaking points and 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 the, even the, the driving lines because it's always different when you have the grip and when you um uh what kind of error you have what kind of weather it is um you know all of the setup of the car everything is is different when you actually drive in in real life but then you still know where it turns and you know kind of like how how it's probably going to be yeah. so i found it's pretty good uh to to learn the tracks with the simulator now that i got it otherwise i've used youtube onboard videos which is actually really good too <laughs> <laughs> to to just uh, familiarize with the tracks like okay now it's turning right and now it's turning left and so on so but i'm a really quick learner as i said before so I I require like lap maximum two to to be on my almost maximum level. Uh, so um, I kind of like instantly know uh, how the corners are taken or how how where the limit of the car is and, and all that. So right. uh, I'm not actually uh, worried at all that if we're gonna have a little bit less uh, testing time or or so so. Fantastic. I mean, that's an amazing skill to have, though. You're very lucky when yeah. you can pick it up so quickly. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the eSports e otherwise, um, it was new to me <laughs> because the last time I had played a car game uh, was when uh, you actually had to, um, to to steer the car with the arrows on your keyboard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> well, Gareth and I have uh, done some of the not esports so much, but the sim racing stuff, and we did it with the the radicals um, a little while ago. Oh, and yeah. that was difficult, but uh, not so much for you. Any any tips that you've got driving a radical? Yeah, from the radical, that's actually really really fun car. It's like a big co kart, uh, to be honest. Um, it's like uh, yeah, it's it's actually really really good to drive because you're most of the radicals you're sitting in the middle. And then, um, and the steering is really precise and, and you can actually feel the car really well. So you have a certain flow in the car, which is actually, I, I enjoy it a lot. So um, I, and I'm also in love with all kind of LMP cars. I think they are amazing. Uh, um, yeah, amazing to just steer and drive and, and, and you don't have that understeer or or anything like that because they are really like smooth uh, mm -hmm. and, and really precise with the steering yeah well talk, talking about lmp i mean is le mans a, a, an ambition of yours going forward is this yeah. i would really love to win the le mans <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome <laughs> so i i would yeah i would definitely like to like to do uh le mans in, in in my career still so hopefully well, that yeah. kind of an opportunity arises at some point the team's heard it here first this is emma's <laughs> application <laughs> <laughs> have you done any endurance series racing before at all like any endurance racing or no not actually no i haven't um it's been only uh, sprint racing to be honest so uh, probably the longest race i've done about 40 45 minutes or something or so so, uh, okay. but yeah, I would love to do the in endurance racing as well. And especially now when I'm a little bit older, because you have more understanding of, uh, of, uh, how to, you know, maintain the tires. And that, that's actually one of, one of my good things as well as a driver, 
that I am really, really aware um, of the tire. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I think I could do good. Yeah. I'm sure, would be nice. I'm sure you could. Yeah. I'm sure you could. And actually, it, it leads into a question quite nice that we've seen since Jamie Jamie Chadwick won the championship. Yeah. She she went and raced in Formula Regional with Prima, and then yeah. she's going to Extreme E this season. And presumably, yeah. some of that has to help by winning the W Series and the prestige that comes with it. So, should you win this season, what kind of doors would you like to open for you apart from Le Mans, of course? Uh, yeah, many. Then it means if I if I win this year, it means that I can't do uh, a W series next year, <laughs> which leaves many doors uh, to be opened. Um, so, yeah, I would love to do. I would love to be a factory driver for for some kind of a yeah for some manufacturer, and uh, and, and to do different kind of racing. No matter if it's end runs or 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 then the Le Mans, uh, that would be awesome to do as well. Uh, different, yeah, LMP, um, single seaters, no matter what. I actually enjoy all of the racing, no matter what kind of a car I have. I'm always thrilled because that's where my motivation comes from for the racing. Um, that feeling that I get when I sit in the car and then um, that I can feel every little bit what's happening. Uh, I can analyze, like, analyze all of the yeah, all of the feelings and then, you know, bring it up to the engineer and, and tell like, okay, like now we need to lower the, the back with half a mil. I need that for, for the, you know, acceleration or something like that. So, um, yeah, it, it happens in no matter what car I drive uh, and the, the, lim the kind of the feeling of the limits and, and all that. So, uh, yeah. As long as you're <laughs> racing, you'll be happy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are your long-term aspirations and after racing? Um, you know, what, what do you see in life next, uh, you know, at the end of your career? I mean, I hope that's a good few years away yet, but what, what, do, you, what do you plan to do going ahead? Mm, good question. Uh, at the moment, yeah, I, I really enjoy being an athlete um, and really doing a proper athlete life. But, uh, but then, yeah, I have many options. I, I do have an education as well. So I, I am a Bachelor of Business in Marketing, but then I'm also, I just completed last year um, this kind of a, uh, international uh, sports management degree uh, in, in uh, United States Sports Academy uh, and a university that's, that's in the United States. So, um, so I have um, education. So I can use that to to different kind of things. And then in, in Finland, I'm an entrepreneur as well. I have my own company um, and, and, and working with media. So I'm also uh, kind of like a TV presenter and presenter in, in different events and a radio host and, and, and all that. So the speaking, as you may see, is not a problem for me. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's... Yeah, so that's basically uh, what I do even now, and mm -hmm. it will be really, um, yeah, it will be like uh, quite natural to to just move move on with that uh, anyway. But uh, but yeah, then then it would be love to lovely to do something with sports in some yeah. sort of way. So we'll see uh, where the where the life gets me, but it's not like. I'm not having a crisis about that because it's really important for me to have many kind of abilities and many kind of like education and all that to so that the doors are all doors are always open so that I can choose uh, what I want to do. We've seen some of the we've seen some of the other drivers do driver coaching. Some of the ones in W Series is that something you'd want to do? Uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm doing it for some. I, I really need to have the passion for that individual that I do it for. I, I've done that to a couple of, uh, of young, young, uh, good racers uh, that are doing still karting. So yeah, maybe, but not like, I don't think that I would be just, you know, uh, coaching every day someone. I'm more like, uh, I'm, I'm pretty passionate about uh, 
about business and uh, I'm really passionate about like entrepreneurship and all that. So mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe I aim a little bit. Uh, it, it may be like one thing, but then maybe I aim for that would need it to be like I had my own business or something, you know, own track or something like that. So you're trading some of the uh, some drivers at the moment. And of course, Finland's notorious for having terrific drivers. Yeah. You've got Hakkinen, you've got Mackinen, you've got Raikkonen now, Bottas. And you say you know Valtteri. Do you know Kimi? Are you planning on having any um, excursions <laughs> this year with the, the two Finns in the F1? Group? Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, yeah, I do. I do know him too. Uh, well, obviously, I know Walter a little bit better because we've spent our childhood together, <laughs> and we've been teammates together as well, the same age. And then Kimi is like ten years older than me, uh, so we haven't raced with him. But yeah, we we do know each other, and I've actually it's been fun because, uh, as I said, I do this uh, kind of uh, presenting and, and hosting stuff as well, and. I've been involved in 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 such events where I've actually been interviewing him and, wow, cool. and doing doing such things like and, and driving with him and, and stuff. Done some videos and all that, which has been really crazy. You know, me being there uh, interviewing, even though I'm a driver as well. But uh, but it, it's been actually nice anyway. So um, um, yeah, so we'll definitely depending on how this uh, virus things uh, evolve uh, in the world, but maybe we'll have the chance to to meet and to, uh, yeah, to just, you know, speak with each other and, and, and cheer for each other. Yeah. yeah it's going to be, be a terrific season, I think, with, uh, with the F1 yeah. support as well. It's going to be, yeah, the, the tracks you're visiting, the drivers are going to be around and just the coverage of it all. I really think yourself and W Series are going to, have a really really good year really excited to see it yeah i am i'm so excited myself as well and especially when i know that because we are so all of yeah we have the same cars similar cars and and we are changing the cars uh to each race and all that so we are really equal uh in terms of the of the equipment we have and then it means also that the racing is gonna be really cool and there is a lot of talented drivers. So I think people will really get in love about uh, all of the, you know, actual racing itself. A lot of, you know, uh, overtaking, uh, a lot of close situations, but then everyone coming out of the corners, uh, you know, undamaged and all that with the respect uh, that we have for each other. So I think people will, yeah, be in love with W Series this year. Jamie mentioned that one of the engineers in particular, she was like, uh, one of the races where she got assigned to him, she was like, yes, excellent, because she felt he was that good as of an engineer. And, it, and I think she actually won that race. So she felt like, really happy about it. Mm. Do, did you have any, um, uh, have any of those experiences yourself where you felt like having one particular engineer really helped with the car? Yeah, well, we uh, to be honest, we can't change that much in the car Uh, we have limited uh, uh, setup changing so which is obviously because they wanted to keep it quite equal for for everyone for example um, if you compare me as a little bit older driver who has a lot of experience to someone who doesn't and then I have uh, you know opportunity to just change the setup anyhow I want to uh, it would make huge differences Uh, so the engineer is more or less like about the communication uh, obviously of course the tire pressures all that is is a huge thing um, as well but I felt that there were there were really good personalities and really really talented people as engineers as well obviously mm-hmm. with someone you have a, a good relation and someone someone maybe you know that you you need to work a little bit longer and we changed the the cars to each race, which meant that on Thursday we got uh, to find what car and what engineers and what mechanics do we have. So mm-hmm. that actually <laughs> led to a to um, um, led to a situation where we needed to start the speed dating quite 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 fast <laughs> and uh, and to to find out like okay where are you from what are you doing what's your passion. What are you good uh, good at? Uh, what's your strengths? Maybe to find out the weaknesses, to find out what kind of communication 
uh, that kind of that that person has um, and then you know with that I I then knew okay what do I need to tell him okay I need to tell or her there were also female there yes <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and what do I need to tell the engineer that okay is it is it you know that you need to tell me these and these and these things while I'm driving I don't want this kind of information I want that and now we're gonna do this so it it kind of like uh with each of the engineers um I was working differently because it's all about their personalities and how to kind of like lift up those uh, dimensions of your personality to match theirs and mm -hmm. then uh, and we could get a really good match and, and uh, especially that Aston race was amazing because um, many of the drivers had uh, had probably some communication uh, um, Kind of like uh, uh, not problems, but uh, difficulties with uh, with one of the engineers because the English was not that good, and, and then of course really shy personality, and then I was like, okay, well, I just you know need to kind of like figure out what is it all about and what what are his strengths and and weaknesses, and then I need to lead uh, the team in that matter to do um, to do you know certain things, and then we won. <laughs> and he was amazing. And he was so he was so talented, but obviously he couldn't tell because uh, because of the English and the, you know the language and 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 really shy personality. So he didn't want to make a, a huge thing out of himself and and all that. So, but we were able to to make a really really good relationship in those few days. And then we had that trust, and and he was so fast, you know bringing up all the all the data so I but I just needed to tell him I was like okay data from this lab this corner compare it to that lab that corner uh you know like now do this kind of setup change you put and then and then we uh, yeah it was a really 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 good uh communication in the end and 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 we got it working and yeah Super. it was a good result <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that just tells you know how important the teamwork is and how important it is. Those social skills are huge in motorsports, and then uh, the understanding and and the respect for for the engineers and for the mechanics uh, and and that kind of an atmosphere that you as a driver need to build to be able to actually win the races. <laughs> that's uh, that's yeah. a really really huge part. You mentioned then so. W Series, you change cars, you change engineers week to week. Would you think if you didn't have that, if you had the same engineers, the same car, do you think you would, say your Aston race, for example, do you think you would be winning all the races or do you think it doesn't make as big a difference as, uh, as we might think from looking down? Uh, well, obviously it's really important that you have a good relationship with the, with the engineer and with the mechanics, that you have a good team. But that's, I think more or less about you as a driver to build that it's your responsibility um and then um and and maybe yeah then if if it were a longer period uh, maybe you you would have uh, even you know deeper relationship and not just like for a couple of days so maybe it would involve even even for for uh, for a deeper uh cooperation in that matter and that would probably be even better but in a way, uh, in W Series, when uh, the the setup actually changes are limited, uh, so the engineering, the the skills of the engineer, is not probably needed the same way as in um, as in other series, probably, because uh, then you don't have to, or you don't have that much uh, uh, setup thinking or, 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 or things like that. But then at the same time, uh, for some drivers, it will be more important uh, that the engineer is really good with the, with the data, explaining the data or teaching the driver to drive or, you know, something like that. But for me, it's always been really important that, that the engineer can do the, the setup and can understand when I tell like, okay, car is doing this and this in this part of the corner and all of the right corners and then I've already done like all of the thinking in the head <laughs> and analyzing and then I just you know come there and say like I think we should lower the car 
what do you think uh, what, yeah. what 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 would be probably you know what what would be your your idea of this and then we just like together like to analyze and like to uh to to think all of the scenarios and maybe even go to the simulator and try it and think outside the box and all that so that's why i really love when when working with engineers that you can do that brain work together uh, and analyze it sounds like you've uh, that, so. it sounds just like you've got you know quite a lot of just experience those years of experience have helped that and i think it's sidakova coming in and she's going to be 17 18 by the time the season starts is that something if you were 17 and 18 coming in that you'd want to be more assertive on or would you think you'd need that help as a young driver coming in with single seaters yeah well actually w series is really really good for those drivers who are coming in uh, especially when there are those kind of engineers that can explain uh, a lot and then um i had the privilege when i moved on from uh with single seaters and formula four at that time so i had a really good team uh, engineer was awesome uh, he's called Perti. Uh, greetings to Perti, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and he was amazing. He, um, we, we, uh, we, yeah, we set up the car together. Uh, he let me to change the the gearbox, and you know I could change the the gears in the gearbox because I I could actually. He really took me in, uh, and, and we. Um, yeah, we had a really good way. We're actually friends even even now, and uh, and they explained a lot and explained the data and explained. And then I had also a really good uh, teacher. The team boss was a former driver, and uh, uh, so he explained all the all the driving and 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 stuff. So and he was always really um, glad that I learned so quickly. So the, and I was doing the things that he said. So that is actually really important as a young driver when you are. Uh, coming to to single seaters, especially now for for example for Irina Sidorkova, who is uh, who is 17 and coming to W Series, I will, I'm sure that she will get all the the help that she really needs to be ready to then move forward uh, to to bigger formulas and to different series. Uh, she will be ready. Yeah. Is that something you think you'll want to help with as well? Like, I know she's obviously a competitor. She's another driver in the championship that you want to win and not her. But is it something that you as more experienced, we talked about this W Series being quite a, a tight-knit group. Yeah. Is that something you'll help her with? Yeah, well, I'm helping in a way because if I set up the car and it, it seems to be good, anyone can take the setup. <laughs> so, <laughs> so because all of the information is free, sure. uh, it, it's up there to take. To anyone and all of the onboard videos all of the data anything is ready so if i do the fastest lap everyone is taking my lap into into theirs and then they are comparing my fastest lap to their fastest lap and then they are comparing the onboard videos together and you know so you don't have too much to hide anymore <laughs> and then they can take the setup as well so they know exactly uh, what you're driving with and that is actually really good in a way that um because uh, it's, it's the atmosphere is is really yeah really good because of that because no one has anything to hide and no one you know if someone comes and asks you okay how do you do this corner you just better tell because why not to, to find out yeah why not to tell so <laughs> So is there like a big group whatsapp group or facebook messenger group or something yeah we do have <laughs> yeah we do have a watch up group and then sometimes we we do uh we send some memes and and all that into the watch up group but, but usually it's for um for just communication so people ask things about their um, for example now about the helmets and you know uh tips for for maybe helmet d designs or tips for who is going to paint or what kind of helmets we're going to need and 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 all that kind of stuff so and then we can also ask things uh from from the w series uh it's a community yeah. <laughs> it feels like uh, being on a on a school trip uh <laughs> when when we are at the races because we we go with a big bus you know all together uh, at the same time from the hotel to the track and then back to the hotel and all that so we we train together we do anything everything together so it, it's kind of fun 
That's, uh, that's really insightful here about the WhatsApp group and um, could only imagine the, the helmet designs that you guys are trying to recommend. <laughs> Maybe put a meme, yeah. a meme on my helmet design. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. There's one more question I've got to ask. So, of course, yeah. that you've you've mentioned you've got a daughter and W Series, of course, <laughs> is promoting women in racing. So with or without W Series, would you want to see your daughter follow in the footsteps? Ah, oh, good, good question. I haven't actually introduced her to the sport too much, uh, probably because I know the downsides too well with the funding and all that. Uh, but no, she's been actually, uh, yeah, doing cards for a couple of times and she's actually really good. So, um, but now I've asked if she wants to go and drive and she said that no. So I don't blame her. Um, and as now when I'm still active, it will be probably, you know, I don't know how it will fit if if uh, we went on, uh, yeah, supporting fully on her. Uh, so I don't know. She, I will support no matter what she wants to do. Uh, in her life, she can become a superhero if she wants, and I will always <laughs> back her up. So right. um, it's about it's it's up to her. She can decide. I will be there, and my husband will be there for her, and uh, and uh, our dog will be oh, there hello. for her. <laughs> 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 the whole family supporting. So um, yeah, amazing stuff. Well, Emma, the best of luck for this season, and we'll be cheering you on and. Uh, Fingers crossed you get to get that championship that you richly you. deserve. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. You too. Thank you for Thanks being so for open, Emma. Hopefully you're going to have an amazing season um, and hopefully we can hope for have another chat with you at some point, maybe in the middle of the season and see how things are going. But it's been terrific. So I want to say thank you for joining us in the grandstand and yes. have a terrific 2021. We can't wait to see you on track. Yeah, thank you. You too. Enjoy the year. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye.